getting too grumpy, old men, as we look back to the good old days of AFL football. And tonight's show is an absolute beauty. A man who was selected on the wing in the AFL's team of the century and once walked off the ground with a broken leg. Dougie Hawkins says he would have sprinted off the ground, <laughs> but he actually walked off the ground with a broken leg and he's an old teammate of mine and part of a very, very, maybe the most famous centre line in the history of AFL football. Plus a man who played AFL football at 16 years of age, captained his club and coached his club to a premiership, all coming up on Grumpy Old Men. But first of all, we've got to say that Bobby Davis is still, still not, not here. Crazy. Tony Shaw has grabbed that chair Feels and he right won't too. let Bobby back. He'll get grumpy. He's still over in Hollywood, isn't he? He's, he's in Hollywood. Still over Hollywood. He's halfway through a sex scene, I reckon. He's oh. just about. <laughs> it's halfway lasted. through the sex scene, Bobby. And it's lasted just, two weeks. Yeah, he's just taking his time, Bobby. They <laughs> <laughs> reckon he couldn't get his Oscar through the metal detectors at the airport. <laughs> but we Bobby can assure six. you that uh, Bobby is still just recovering from that Wizard Cup loss. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and uh, he will yeah, be no. making his He'll reappearance. And we're looking forward to Bobby coming back on Grumpy Old Men. No, we're not. Oh, 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 yes, we are. Yeah. He is the grumpiest of grumpy people. That we have met. Our first guest on Grumpy Old Men is an old teammate of mine and he is definitely one of the greats of AFL football and that's St Francis. Francis Burke joins us on Grumpy Old Men. Francis, welcome. Thanks Kev, nice to be here. Uh, last week we had Michael Moncrief on and uh, he was talking about his father Alan played with the Bulldogs and he didn't play at the Bulldogs because he didn't like the look of the Bulldogs and thought he'd go somewhere else and Hawthorne was his team of his choice. But in your case, your father played with Richmond and you wanted to play with the Tigers. That's true. And, uh, and I had the choice of coming to Richmond or any club really because being from the country and no zoning or no, uh, a lot of areas, uh, it was my choice and uh, I just didn't really ever consider playing anywhere else except at Richmond. Mm. Your father was, by all accounts, a champion player and uh, was going to be one of the great full forwards of AFL football. I think he only played about 16 games, kicked about 50 goals in his career, but uh, sustained a bad knee injury and his whole career was over. 16 games. Yes, he actually played again, but uh, not, not to the same level that he was playing at before he hurt himself. And of course, ironically, these days he would have missed a couple of weeks and uh, had a uh, uh, a clean up or something like that and been back into it but uh, he didn't reach the levels again that he that he did and uh, but I think he was a very gifted sportsman and football was one of the sports that he was uh, a fantastic at. He played cricket too Francis could he? Was he an all-round sportsman? Oh yes he played uh, he was a very good cricketer, a wonderful cricketer really and pl yeah. and played with uh, AIF sides in the war in England when he was there too uh, with a lot of very good players and uh, I see he was uh, he it was a fantastic uh, experience growing up with a man who was a very good sportsman and I loved it and uh, I didn't feel overshadowed over at all as a as a kid having a dad who was very well known in the district and famous for his sporting ability uh, I just thought I was lucky to have someone like that and uh, it was just uh, something to be uh, thankful for. Francis what about as a kid uh, is this true you had a medical condition something someone said a, a heart murmur is a 14 year old and you mightn't have been able to play sport or they found it out pretty early? Well that's true uh, I was diagnosed with what is now called aortic stenosis which is a slight thickening of the uh, aortic valve but of course uh, when it was diagnosed everyone packed themselves of course and the <laughs> doctor panicked and my mother was worse and uh, it was just uh, it was almost as though uh, to me I was in imminent danger of uh, collapsing on the spot and that was the end of me but and I felt fantastic I didn't feel any different to what I, I always did and all of a sudden someone said well look you just can't play sport you're not well enough anymore you know <laughs> really? and, uh, yeah and so, so you I didn't know you had no feeling like you no. didn't have shortness of breath or so it just they no. checked you up and found this thing was wrong exactly so when it all came out later I felt embarrassed about it you know and I still feel embarrassed about it because oh, sorry uh, I brought it up. To me, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was just uh, a non-event and whilst I do have the condition yeah. and it is uh, I monitored every 15 or 10 years or so just for the sake of checking it up checking yeah. it up because sometimes these things can grow worse as you grow older but uh, it's just been one of those things that uh, that the media picked up on the time uh, and uh, that's had no effect on me at all much to my embarrassment yeah. Yeah. so your health's been good then has it been health's been normal as fantastic you look yeah. terrific too by the well way. Uh, <laughs> I don't know whether you're a very good judge. <laughs> <laughs> now, Frank, whilst uh, you may have wanted to play with the Tigers and follow in your footsteps of your dad, you had to have some sort of ability to actually get recruited and for the Tigers to go after you. Obviously, Graham Richmond saw something in Francis Burke. So as a youngster, you must have shown pretty 
much a, a fair bit of talent yourself and you went to I think you had a year at Assumption College which is you know uh, I know mm. Ray Carroll down there says you're one of the greatest young footballers uh, you know the Assumption College has ever produced so you must have had a lot of ability as a youngster. Um, uh I went to Assumption, uh, w w sorry, the period of Assumption when I was 15 and 16 were probably the times where I developed the most. Uh, but actually I didn't, I wasn't a star, but I was always quite good for my age. But when I left Assumption uh, after leaving and went back on the farm, I played with Nathalia in the seniors there for three years. Um, and uh, I think that's when uh, I started to attract some interest. Uh, and I think I don't know whether Graham really recruited me because he thought I was going to be a play. He recruited me because I was one of a number of people at that age who were available. And it was, in Graham's case, it was a question of sign 10 to get one. And I think I was in the no, of a nine. You know? <laughs> and, and, uh, that's, and then it turned out that uh, I, pl I played. Uh, and, but mind you, I was happy to have a go. And, um, and, but I was always going to be a farmer. And I travelled backwards and forwards from the farm for the first three years of my league career playing for uh, at Richmond on the Saturday after training here on Thursday and then spending the rest of the week on the farm. Because uh, I never really saw myself as being a, a permanent fixture at league football. I was just hoping really, I suppose, to get some credentials and some experience to go back and 